Just a few announcements before I comment on uh, today's gospel reading. A reminder that this Friday is a solemnity, the solemnity of the Annunciation. So it's a feast day. It's not a day of abstinence the way that most Fridays are, especially the Fridays of Lent. And as I mentioned before, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, is going to consecrate Russia and Ukraine to the Immaculate Heart of Mary in response to the request of the Ukrainian bishops. And we've been all invited to participate in this, all the bishops, priests, and, and laity. And so our time um, will be at 12 noon. So at, in, in Rome, it will be 5 p.m. Our time is 12 noon to be at the exact same time. And we will have a rosary leading up to it. So that rosary will start at 11.30 a.m. I will lead that, that rosary, and then we will do the consecration. We will have the consecration prayer available at that time. Some people have been asking me about it, and I haven't heard anything yet, um, but we will have the, uh, some consecration prayer available for all of us. In the evening, we will not have exposition at 6 p.m. as we normally do, because the Legion of Mary of our parish will be conducting a living rosary here in the parish, so you're all invited to come out for that, to participate in that, and of course at 7 p.m. we have the devotions to the Sacred Heart. Just a reminder, today is Tuesday, this evening at 7.30 p.m. We will continue with the Novena prayers to St. Anthony in preparation for his feast day on June 13th. So uh, it, it'll be online, the uh, Novena prayers. There's a Zoom link that you can find on our parish website. If you wish to um, write an intention uh, for this Novena and put it by the statue of St. Joseph, there is a basket there. So you could just drop your intentions into that basket and we will pray for those intentions every Tuesday evening at 7.30. In today's Gospel reading, notice how St. Peter comes to our Lord asking how many times he should forgive, as many as seven times. And it's worthwhile noting that when he says this, he's being extremely generous, or at least he thinks he's being extremely generous. Should I give as many, should I forgive as many as seven times? That's a lot, right? And notice our Lord's response, no, not seven times, I tell you, but 77 times. And by that, our Lord really means an unlimited amount of times. It's not as if he wants us to keep count, oh, this is the 74th, 75th time I've forgiven you. One more, and I'm not going to forgive you. No, our Lord is really saying, be willing to forgive at all times. And why should we forgive? I mean, there's many reasons as to why we should forgive. I, I suppose the, the main reason is that for our own peace of mind and for our own salvation. So when we hold on to a grudge, when we hold on to anger, it actually makes us more miserable and affects our relationship, even with the people that we love. And of course, the reality is if we don't forgive, as our Lord points out, we cannot be forgiven. And our Lord reiterates this a number of times in the gospel. This is one of the most important things, to forgive, to love everyone. And the reality is that when someone offends us, when someone hurts us, no matter how they, they did it or no matter what they did, if they have sinned, if they have done something wrong, they have hurt themselves more than they have hurt us. And it's not for us to take justice into our own hands because, as our Lord points out, we ourselves are sinners. So we are deserving of the same kinds of punishment. So we need to leave justice to God. God is going to punish them. And the damage that they cause to themselves because of their sins, as I mentioned, is far worse than the harm they do to us. And so the reality is we should actually feel sorry for them. We should pray for them. St. Francis de Sales says that when we see someone doing something wrong, or even if they do something wrong to us, there may be hundreds of reasons as to why they're acting the way that they are acting, and we should try to come up with the most charitable explanation. Well, maybe they had a bad day. Maybe they didn't know what they really said. Maybe they just spoke without thinking. Maybe it was just a, an impulse. Maybe they didn't, weren't taught properly. There's, there's so many possibilities. And, and if we come up with the most charitable explanation, it's almost like we're excusing them. 
Not to say that what they did is okay, but we don't hold a grudge against them. And our Lord, to reiterate this, goes, goes on to give us this parable of the unjust um, servant or the wicked slave who's not willing to give his, his fellow slave who offends him only in a little way. So this parable, this is worth noting, this parable is really about each one of us. In reality, we are like that wicked slave. If you've ever been angry with anyone or held a grudge against anyone, then this parable is about you. So this parable is about each one of us. So every time, you know, this, this gospel passage comes up, you know, it, it mentions that the, the wicked slave owed his master 10,000 talents, whereas uh, the, man, the, uh, the slave's fellow slave owed him 100 denarii. And I always remember what one denarii is, but I always forget the value of a talent. So I usually have to look it up. And, and I'll tell you, so one denarii is a day's wage. So in today's standards, it's more than $100. Maybe it's 150 I don't know. But let's just say $100. So 100 denarii, that's 100 days of work. Okay, granted, you can't give your full day's work to, to pay back someone. So it would take a while. It would take more than 100 days, but it's doable. It's conceivable that that person could pay back what they owe. Now, when it comes to a talent, one talent is the equivalent of 20 years labor of an individual. So receiving 100 days or $100 per day for 20 years. Now, once again, you can't pay everything back because you need some of that money for food and, and whatever else, right? So it would take a lot longer than 20 years, but it's the value of 20 years worth of wages. And that's one talent. But in this parable, what our Lord says is that the slave owed him not one talent, but 10,000 talents. So 10,000 times 20 years is 200,000 years. And that's if you were to pay, you know, if all of your wages went towards paying that back. 200,000 years. So the whole point is, you cannot pay it back. And the reality is for us, because of our sins, if we've ever fallen into mortal sin, what do we owe God? What is our penalty? Hell, for all eternity. There's nothing we could do to atone for our sin, to make reparation for the sins that we have done against God. So what we owe him is, is infinite. We cannot pay it back. And so God in his goodness allowed Christ to suffer in our place, to make that atoning sacrifice in our place. And in his mercy, he has forgiven us this huge, huge debt. And then we, with our fellow slave or our fellow human beings, who are also servants of God, we get so angry with our neighbor. We hold on to a grudge. We're not willing to forgive. So, as I mentioned, this parable is really about each and every one of us. And I think it's worthwhile for us to reflect on the fact that we have been forgiven so much. The penalty that we deserve has been removed. Our debt has been dispensed. And this is something we should rejoice in. But it should motivate us in this, in this spirit of, of gratitude and, and just thanksgiving and, and just praise of God, that we should be generous with our neighbor, merciful with our neighbor, to be willing to overlook the slight faults of our neighbor, the, the offenses that our neighbor commits against us. And even if our neighbor were to torture us and, let's say, to murder us, even then we should forgive because even that offense is not as great as our sins against God. And the reality is that because of our mortal sins, we have crucified Christ.
We are responsible for his crucifixion because of our sins. If no one had ever sinned, Christ would not have had to die. If only one person committed a mortal sin, Christ would still die for that person. So Christ took every one of our sins upon himself and died because of my sins and your sins. So no matter what anyone does to us, even if they were to murder us, we should have a spirit of forgiveness.